Blessed and glorious morning, Don Watchers. Welcome to the sixth day of our Don Watch. My name is Regi Agabao from Mahabula Center. It's so privileged and pleasure to be your exhorter. Today I want to talk about the subject In Christ we are complete and blessed. Our scripture is found in Colossians chapter 2 verses 9 to 10. Colossians 2 verses 9 to 10. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Amen. It's very important our appreciation of verses 9 and 10 that we not miss the word they between these two verses that we read. In verse 9 says that God made all his fullness dwell in Christ. And Paul uses the same word in verse 10 when he says, You are complete in Him. Amen. And so in some sense, just as God made all His fullness dwell in Christ, Christ has made all His fullness dwell in us. So we typically call this union with Christ. And it is a very important aspect of the gospel we believe. Over and over when Paul describes what happens when someone gets saved, he says that the most basic work of God that happens is that we are joined to Christ and we receive His righteousness and His resurrection power. This is truly incredible gift. What more could we simply, simply want or receive than Christ Himself? So as a result, Paul can say we are complete in Christ. There is nothing more that we need for salvation, for godliness, or for eternity. So being complete in this is, is one proof of our identity in Christ. Now, I would like to tease this out by highlighting five ways that our identity is complete through our union with Christ. So number one, we stand in the righteousness of Christ. So many religions teach that if our good works outweigh our bad works, you can go to heaven. But the Bible never holds out this kind of hope. Because the actual standard is much higher. To earn salvation, you would have to achieve the perfect righteousness of God. And there is no way that we could ever be righteous like God. No matter how many good works we do, we will always fall short of the glory of God. Therefore, we have no hope of earning salvation. But we don't have to because there is good news. When we united with Christ, we credited with Christ's perfect righteousness so that when God looks at us judicially, He no longer sees our sin. The Father only sees the perfect righteousness of His Son. We have complete righteousness because of Christ. So as a result, a second way we complete is that, number two, we are accepted by God. This is truly incredible because God is just and righteous. There is nothing in us that deserves His favor. But when God look, looks at us and He sees the righteousness of His Son, He accepts us. In the New Testament, it co this is called, this is what we call, sorry, justification. So we declared righteous, we are declared righteous. And because of this, God is now our Father. Amen. Praise and thank God because the love of our Heavenly Father is absolutely certain and secure. If we are complete in Christ, we are accepted by God and we always will be. As, so as a result, number three, we are eternally secure. The Bible is clear that God did not set His love on us because of something in us, but because of Christ. And since we are complete in Christ, we know that we will always be secure in His love and someday, He will invite us into heaven. We don't have to wonder or fear because our eternity is settled because we are complete in Christ and we have redemption in Him. Amen. Number four, we are a new creature. Galatians 2.20 states, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which now I live in the flesh, I will live by faith, in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So Christ has changed our hearts so that we are not 
what we once were, and His resurrection power is, a, is at work in us to change how we live, how, what do we love, what we love, and how we think. So as a result, the fifth implication or the last, last implication in our union with Christ is that we can be become holy. I want to be clear that we are not complete in the sense that we are completely holy. Rather, the fact that we are complete in Christ means in the in Second Peter chapter one verse three, His divine power has given to uh, to us all things that pertain to life, to life and godliness. In other words, we have everything we need to pursue genuine holiness through Christ. So let's declare the goodness, the wonderful spiritual blessings of God. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 6. Ephesians 1, 3 to 6. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world,